Mark Jackson joins us now on the Boardwalk on the Hotline. And, Mark, I remember vividly you saying last week that you know Porter pretty well and that you saw him play. You labeled him as a possible NBA scoring champion and a legitimate superstar potential. But the red flags of the back injuries and some of the injuries this guy's had, he only played two full college games. So pick 10, 26, and Markel Fultz. Would you give up that haul to go get Michael Porter Jr.? I would not. I would not. And let me tell you why. Um, Michael Porter Jr., to me, is, is going to be a very good player. He's going to be a few for him. Um, but to me, as a 76ers fan, if you love that fan, I have an issue with giving up a guy. So you're, you're pretty much saying, all right, I've given up a Markel Fultz. To me, that position is so important for the 76 team, and my only concern is because of Porter's injury. Let's not talk about last year. Let's talk about now. I, I heard an interview with Porter. He's saying, what, you know, he, he canceled a workout because he had a hip tightness. And he told his agent, his agent got an MRI, everything checked out. But with something he let slip that I, I wonder if many people picked up on. He said, yeah, you know, this is something I've been dealing with for about three or four years now, and it's tightened up on gigs, and then he stopped. And to me, that's a red flag. You know, he's, he's, he's a scoring champion. He, he will be a scoring champion in his league in the next three, four years. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about his injury. Right. You're saying, you know, look, if this guy's healthy and he's playing his best ball, this is his ceiling. But there is a lot of questions about that. And, and then, you know, the one thing is Markel Fultz. I mean, you that would essentially be saying well, we're giving up on this guy altogether. And I know Brett went out to L.A. to go watch him. You know, I don't know what he was watching from him. He saw them all season long. But you got to wonder, you know, there's a lot of conversation out there about what happened with Markel this year. Brett Brown is now the coach and the decision maker. So if he was to trade Markel Fultz, I guess that would be a pretty big indictment on what he thinks about Markel. He's not necessarily as a player. I think it's a, a, it's an indictment on is he healthy? Is he healthy? I think that's an indictment on is he healthy? Gotcha. Um, that's the indictment. I think it's a difference. I think eventually he'll work out his kink, but I think the 76ers are concerned that he's not 100%. Um, and I think that's why Brett Brown went out there. Yes, he's seen him all season, but he still was better on that shoulder, that shoulder of discomfort. So he went to see him and like, look, the draft's coming up. We need to know what direction we're going in. Let's see how this guy is. Is he healthy or not? I really believe that that's why our coach went to see him. Uh, but, hey, listen, that would be an upgrade at the three position offensively. You do give up a lot defensively. Um, with that, If they were to go ahead and do that, that means J.J. Reddick would have to be a, a number one priority at the two-guard position. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Mark Jackson's on the boardwalk. Honda Hotline. We will get into a lot of the uh, prospects in this draft, but taking a look at the Sixers first, and uh, obviously you mentioned Michael Porter uh, as, you know, if the Sixers were to move up. Um, you know, is there any other guy that you would be willing to move up to go get? To be honest, um, or would you rather just stay like, at 10? How, okay, how much? Okay, now you gotta give me some, you gotta give me some numbers now. And what position are you allowing me to move up to get? Oh, you said you. Okay, well, that's what I'm saying. Is there a player yeah. that you'd be willing to put together a sizable package to go up to get? I, I mean, if you say eight, okay, and, okay that, that would be a monster package. But is there a guy you would feel comfortable to say, you know what, that's a guy I really like, and I am willing to give up something of value to go get this particular player? Okay, I'm willing to give up the, the number, the 10th pick. The 26 pick, we got 26, correct? Correct. Yeah. Chance 10th, 26, and Markel Folks to move up to number three to get Luka Doncic. Okay, wow. Yeah. Well, that's some news right there. I mean, that's. Uh, I'll give so it up. I'll give huge. all three of those up for him. <laughs> uh, 10, 26, and Markel Folks, you would move up to get Luka Doncic. Okay. Yes. So what do you like about him? Because a lot of people who like him really like him. And the people who don't like him, their questions have been. Can he put the ball on the floor and get by NBA defenders? That kind of stuff. Let me tell you who Luca is. And mind you, some of these players, you say that these, some of these, some of these 
These people who seem to have not seen him play. Let me tell you from personal experience of seeing him play. He's built, imagine a 6 7 James Harden. That's the way he's built. How does he play? The one thing that people never speak of is his aggressiveness. His ability to get fouled. He's always continuing that line between getting fouled and offensive fouling. He's that aggressive. Um, is he fast? I would compare his speed to James Harden. I would compare his ability to draw contact to a James Harden. So he is a terrific passer. One thing for me is his bottom line, his bottom line right now is he can come in and he's not a bust. You're getting a 10-year player who's going to give you 12 to 13 points next year consistently. He can play on the ball. He can play off the ball. Um, and he's going to get fouled. He's going to get fouled. He is healthy. He is mentally tough because he's been a pro since he was 15. And one thing to keep in mind that the way they coach young players there are much different than the way Americans, or us Americans coach young players. They do not give no sense of entitlement. So when you see a good player, that means he's been pounded on. That means he's been ridiculed. That means he's been dragged around, and he's missing as much as they come. So Luca is, for me, Mark Jackson with us, NBC Sports Philadelphia, Sixers pre and post, talking about the NBA draft tonight. So if the Sixers stay at 10, Mark Jackson, who do you like the best at that spot, or who do you hope maybe falls to them at 10? You know what? I'm going to be honest. I really, I really believe Paul Cruz. Now we're, we're losing Mark. He's breaking up a little there. I didn't hear exactly what he said, and so – uh, we'll see if we can maybe put him on hold real fast and get him to come back because um, why is that after my question? Yeah, well, I mean that was a tough one to think about. At number ten, what would you do? There's a lot. There's nine players that are now off the board. How about what he? How about what he said? Thanks, Josh. Uh, Josh is putting him on hold and trying to get him back on a clear cell. He said, "I would give up 10, 26, and Fultz, not for Michael Porter, who he said was a legitimate scoring Franchise champion, changer. but yes. he said for Luka Doncic." Yeah. Well, here's the thing with Doncic is, is that he's, he's more well-rounded because of all his international play. He's a more polished, more finished product. It's very rare in the NBA draft that you're getting a finished product or a guy that has years of experience already under his belt that's not collegiate experience. This is, I mean, the guys that he's going up against internationally are grown men, you know, quite frankly. Yeah, and one thing is for sure, I mean, by the way, he went on to say, Doncic has been a pro since he was 15. He can play on the ball. He can play off the ball. He can come in and be ready to contribute right away. Now, I, Mark said James Harden. I have also heard people say James Harden when talking about Luka Doncic, mm, that man. Harden is not a guy who's got a lot of speed, but he's savvy and knows how to get around players and can work his body. If you watch Doncic play, that's something that you do see from him. Now, Mark Jackson is back with his – Mark, Pete asked you about number 10. If the Sixers were to stay at 10, is there a guy that you hope is there for them in that spot? You know, I'm hearing a lot about Bridges from Villanova. Um, I, really, I think, let me go back to what I was saying. I yes. really believe once Dallas goes by, I really believe Porter's going to drop. And I think he's going to drop significantly because of his injury. Um, and I think if he's there, you grab him. Everybody speaks of Bridges from Villanova. Um, and they call him a 3 and D type player. If you're picking a guy at number 10, you don't want a 3 and D type player. You want somebody that can come in to tribute now. So Bridges, to me, I think he's much more skilled than people are giving him credit for. I think he's much more well-rounded. Um, I, I really believe that I would I, – if, if Bridges – if Bridges if – Bridges if Bridges is there, I would take him because he's a safe pick. But I, I think Porter's going to slide. I think you can get Porter late in the draft, like late, um, right before the, the team comes. Um, all right. I know last week when you were on, we talked about Kevin Knox, and you said you saw him play in high school since, like, the sixth grade. Um, yeah. Do you think that Kevin Knox could come in and play right away? He's 18 years old. Um, do you think he could come in, or is he a guy that you're going to have to wait on a little bit? I like him. Let me tell you, I, like, I think Knox's upside is better than Bridges. I believe that. 
I think his upside is better than Bridges. He's bigger than Bridges. He's more able to score one on one than Bridges. Um, I, I like I like I like him better than Bridges now. But I think he's like I said, Porter's going to fall. I think Knox is going to move up in the draft. But I like if I had to pick or pick between Bridges and Knox, I'm going to go with Knox. People can say, oh, but he's not a Bridges is a Villanova guy. Yeah, I, I agree. He's a very good player. He knows how to play off the ball. He's going to play defense. But the upside of Knox is just too great. I'm going to go with Knox. And with that being said, I really believe that his ceiling is so high. I really think as of now, I think he can give you a little bit more offensively than Bridges can. Uh, I agree. I take Knox over Bridges as well. Um, all right. I've heard this rumor. Washington is looking to move 15, but they want you to include a contract. Gortat, Morris, Jody Meeks, one of those type of guys. Would you take 15 and Markeith Morris and move back and give them 10? Yes, I'll do that. I would do that. I would take Markeith Morris and that leader pick and give up that number 10 pick. I would. I think you get the Morris, you get another defender off your bench. Um, another guy that can show. Listen, with that being said, I wouldn't bring my Elias Silva. I would like my Martin. I would like that. I would love that in our in our play. I would love that. So that's something that now that's not you know the Sixers haven't been connected, but what the Sixers have been connected to, Mark, and I'm sure Mark will be talking about a lot of this stuff tonight uh, as uh, NBC Philadelphia is oh, doing yeah. a draft special, and Mark will be on there from what eight to midnight tonight, Mark? Eight to midnight. Okay, so. Uh, if they're not asking you some of these questions, maybe they should uh, bring me in to produce for you, all right? <laughs> Here we go. Sounds good. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, there's a lot of teams calling the Sixers for 10 to get Gilgis Alexander. Would you take him at 10 or move out of that spot and let someone else take him? I would get more assets for that pick. I would trade out of it. I would definitely trade out of it, give it up, and let them choose that he wants to move back. You don't like Alexander? Yeah, but he's he's not what we need with the Sixers need right now. He, he's yeah. a good player. Um, I think he's limited. His shooting ability is limited uh, to be able to shoot it consistently. Um, and he's a you know I, I really would I would I would let that one slide. I would move back. He's not a. Player. What about Trey Young, Mark? What are your thoughts on him, the kid out of Oklahoma? No, no. no. <laughs> that's a hard no. no. I'm here. I'm hearing so much about Trey Young, and I'm hearing less about Colin Saxon. Saxon is 20 times better than Trey Young. People see Steph Curry, uh, uh, Steph Curry, uh, Curry clone, and people jump through the roof. Saxon is a better player right now, and he has a better upside. He's going to give you defense. He's going to score. The ability, if his shots are falling, to create off the dribble. Trey Young is going to struggle defensively, and when his shots are falling, he's going to struggle offensively. Texas is much more uh, a full-rounder player as a fan of Hey, uh, all right, you're a big guy. You were a 6'10 center back when the 6'10 center was, you know, the biggest guy in the court. Now, if you're 6'10, six you're playing the two. You're, well, you're playing some sort of yeah. front court position. Um, but what about these guys that are seven foot? Mo Bamba, um, do you think him, De- DeAndre Ayton, those guys, are they – are they players in today's game that could be franchise changers in today's game? I know I'm not saying like let me ask you a question then, Mark. David Robinson was the number one pick in the draft. Would his style of play, the way that he played, make him the number one pick in this year's draft? You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, so let me answer. That's a very good question. David Robinson, yes, would still be the number one pick in the draft. Why? So when you see pick and roll, you see pick and roll, you see. Uh, get guys rolling. You see Capella. Roll to the rim, throw it up to the rim. If he's not here, you got to have a weak side shooter where you can skip that ball to. If David Robinson is eight and Bum Bamba is, is David Robinson, wasn't just a pick and dive kind of player. David Robinson could shoot the mid range. He could throw the ball in the box and give you 20. He was more of a Joel Embiid type. Joel Embiid is much more skilled than eight and Mo Bamba um, or, or, or to this day. And I think Joel is silly as higher than Mo Bamba. And um, for me, David Robinson would translate into the day. Shaq would translate the day because you know you're going to get 25 consistent points, not just picking and rolling, lobbing up to him. You can give him the ball and he's going to score a plus. People that can score a plus and defend are still a top draft pick in today's day. 
Yeah, uh, you know, Aiton and Bamba are two guys that uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see how they fit in on the offensive end of the floor in today's game. That's all. Just, you know, are you going to see them with range or are they going to be limited on the offensive end? You know, I looked at Mo Bamba. I watched him play a lot because I went to West Virginia, so I see Texas a bunch. And I, I, I remember, you probably remember, I remember Sam Dellenbear, the most athletic dude ever, but my man was out of position all the time. I mean, he was jumping, running into the stanchion. I mean, he just was so – and I watched him play at Seton Hall a lot too, thinking if the Sixers ever took this guy, I'm going to kill myself. And sure enough, that's who they end up taking. I had to watch that guy play. Always frustrating because he was always so athletic and out of position. I agree. I agree with you. I concur with that. You know, me being a teammate of Sammy Butler, Sammy Dunlapur, he was a great athlete. But Sam, so here's, here it is. He when made a lot of money, drafted, that Sam Dellenbear. You get drafted. You get drafted. And you have to be a, one good, a very good talent to get drafted. Now when you go to a team, let them decide how they want to use you. They want to use Sam on a pick and die pick like today's game. Pick, catch all of you, and then open up the weak side. Sam never wants to do that. Sam's got so much like that. Let me show you this. Let me show you that. And he never flourished in that hole. He wasn't, and I was a teammate with him. I love it. He wasn't open minded to do at, at be where the coaches wanted him. He always wanted to do differently. Every coach he had always butted heads with him. He never wanted to do what they wanted to do. He always just wanted to that. I need to show you more. And at that time, when you get drafted, you need to be what they want you to be at that time until you go to a team who wants you to show them more. So that's why Sam never really progressed like. Let people thought he was going to do. The question with Mo Bamba is he so wrong? Is he open minded enough to be a pick and dive kind of guy? If that's the case, then that's the case. People say he's a great shoot, shoot ability from the three point line. Everybody's fascinated with a big guy shooting a three. That's fine and dandy. But the captain in Washington, Texas, to me, is not a franchise player. Yes, he's a shot blocker. Does he have potential to be a franchise player on the defensive end? Yes, he does. But as of now, I think, I don't know, is he open to do what the coaches are asking for him? I don't know him personally what they do. Um, uh, DeAndre Aitken, he's more, he's more skills-wise, more whole offensively. Defensively, he wasn't a dog, which means he never really wanted to go out as a defensive stopper. So he has problems on that end. If you to put them both together, they're a complete player. But that's not a different player. It depends on what sort of team he's now. Mark Jackson with us. I feel like we could say that about a lot of guys in this draft. Mark, if you took one half of this and one half of the other, you get this perfect player, right? Uh, hey, Mark, I want to know what your thoughts are on Marvin Bagley. Where where do you think he ends up, and, and what are your thoughts about Marvin Bagley, the kid out of I'll Duke? Tell you, I'll tell you, Mark, Marvin Bagley, if I had the number one pick, that's who I would take. You know, he's moving up the draft board. He's so athletic. He has so much belt. You know, he has so much belt that – He's, he's like, he's a Chris Bosch to me. He, yeah. he reminds me a lot of Chris Bosch, you know, um, to me, because he he has a dish. He can do some things in a low post. Um, he's not as, he's skilled, but he's not as refined as Chris Bosch was. So as far as the bounce, as far as the ability to score, he has some of those characteristics. So to me, I would take him before I would take Bull Bob. Yeah, he seems like a guy who could be, um, you know, that classic, well, we say classic in today's game, the classic 6'10 perimeter, uh, but also isn't afraid to mix it up. He gets the rebounds. A lot of people think he'll be a double-double guy, but I think, the, the you know, he gives you rebounding and the shooting. He's interesting. Hey, I know um, a lot of people, I'm sure you guys will be discussing the Villanova guys. Uh, DiVincenzo uh, seems like a lot of people like him, but I thought Amari Spellman gave – Villanova is something that the Sixers really lack. You know, I think he could kind of be that Al Horford type, the pick and roll and shoot the three kind of guy at the NBA level at six foot nine. What do you think about Spellman? Do you like him better than you like a guy like DiVincenzo? Uh, DiVincenzo to me, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a DiVincenzo to me is everybody speaks of his athleticism. Like he, he's athletic. Ninety nine percent of players in, the, in their draft are athletic. To me, what they're forgetting to me is. He's a very good defender. A lot of people speak about his ability to defend, his ability to create for others and not just himself. You know, I think he's very well-rounded. I think he's going to have a very good career in the NBA. I think he, he will transition easy 
can they make? Because I think he can play on the ball and off the ball. Some players nowadays in the guard position need to have the ball in their hand. But I believe he can do so much on and off the ball that I think he's, he's valuable. I like him a lot. All right, uh, a couple more with uh, Mark Jackson, NBC Philadelphia here. He'll be on the television tonight from 8 to midnight uh, talking about the, what the Sixers do. Now, Mark, we know they have 10, 26, and then they have three picks in the second round. They traded one last night. But I would assume there's going to be a lot of draft and stash type of players. I mean, they can't fit all of these guys uh, on the roster at this stage, you know, where they are. But uh, if that number 26 area there, um, you know, do you think – that at 26 you're fi- you're finding a guy that can help this year's team out or would you try to do something with 26 to maybe get a little bit more established player i would get rid of it i'm, I'm i've said this before in your show um i think the 26 does not hurt, help them they have so many young pieces they don't need to add a young pieces you know i'm hearing grayson allen i'm hearing mm-hmm. Dimit- 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 there. you don't need those players you still got tlc you still got fur time you know, you, 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 them picks are not valuable to me for the Sixers now. I think um, I really believe in a future. Um, I think you can package that along with that tip pick to move up. I really do. Even if it's one slot, even if it's two slots, I really believe you can do that or trade it for a future first. But now I don't think they need to add another young piece to the team. Mark, uh, when you were at Temple, did you play with Brunson? No. Well, yeah, when I transferred from D.C. to the Temple, but the year I set out was Rick Brunson's last year. Okay. Yeah, I was practicing with him. I didn't play with him on the court. All right. Um, little overlap. So what about his son there, Jalen? I mean, I I get it. He accomplished so much. I would have liked to see him go back to college and become, like, one of the most accomplished college players of all time. I get it. He probably wouldn't gain much from doing that. But what kind of pro do you think he would be? To me, I think Dylan, he's a he's an alternate floor general. You know, he he's been he's been prepared for this since the day he was born. He's bared witness to his father being a journeyman. Um, he's been at every practice, every NBA arena there is before he was able to walk. So I think he's gonna fall people are always gonna say, Oh, his athleticism, his athleticism and he's gonna fall deeper and deeper and he's gonna end up falling for a contender. And he's going to be a major contributor on a contender in the draft. First round pick, though, Mark. Do you think? Do you think Jalen Brunson goes I to the first somebody, round? I think I really, I really believe somebody would take a chance on Jalen. I don't think it's a chance. I think somebody will want a solid player in the later round, and I think they will move up to get him in the late first round um, or early second round. But so wherever he goes, look him to be in uniform and look him being a rotational player in the NBA next year. He's not a player you got to wait three, four years for. He'll be available to help a team next year. Mark, uh, this just came across as we're talking to you. I love, I love to hear your reaction. Uh, there is a rumor that the Hawks will select Luka Doncic third and then trade him to Dallas for Trey Young. If I'm the Sixers, I'm trying to get a piece of that action. Like <laughs> Vegas. I'm trying to get a piece of that action. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a piece of that. Um, I, I like Luka a lot. Trey. Trey, Trey well, Young the way they're so saying this, it sounds play. like it's already agreed upon that that's what's going to happen. That Doncic will get picked, and then they'll agree to swap those guys. So Trey Young would be going. I don't know why they just wouldn't take them themselves, but uh, that's what exactly. the, that report is essentially saying, you know. But all right, man, a lot going on. So at number ten, do you think the Sixers will be there, or do you have a feeling that uh, they are itching to do something? I think the Sixers will move up. I don't know if they move up to the top five, but they to, I, I see the Sixers trying to find a way to move up to the top seven or eight in the draft. Paxson, both right, first round pick. All right, we'll be uh, checking in with Mark Jackson on the television. He'll be on NBC Sports Philadelphia tonight from 8 uh, to midnight with their coverage of the NBA draft, specifically the Sixers and what they do. And, of course, uh, we'll be checking in with Mark with reaction uh, on the draft here on the Sports Pass. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, fellas. Talk to you later.